Jackson. I'm Carlos Espinosa. I'm Jose Alvarado. I'm Jonathan Diaz. I'm John Gill. I'm Kyle Boone. I'm Marla Ortega. And uh, we are the King Tigers and the Queen. And uh, <laughs> we're hoping that our presentation today demonstrates a tad bit more creativity than our name does. But uh, we did the AOP, AB540 branch of EOPS. Um, a little background of EOPS stands for Extended Opportunities, Programs, and Services. Um, it was founded in 1969 following the Civil Rights Movement. And uh, some of the uh, um, requirements they have for you to join, you must be financially eligible, be a full-time student, meaning you're taking more than 12 units uh, per semester. Um, you must have no more than 48 units already completed. And um, upon high school graduation, if you graduated with a 2.5 GPA or lower, you also qualify for the program. Uh, some of the services EOPS offers include academic and personal counseling, uh, priority registration, which in today's um, day and age with everybody impacting community colleges is huge, and we'll get into that later. Um, and book and transportation assistance, um, assistance in purchasing test textbooks, parking permits, um, bringing down the cost of parking permits, and uh, helping people with that. Um, we have a brief video that we found on YouTube that uh, kind of just, we just want to give a short representation of kind of some images from the Civil Rights Movement just to kind of give a time period of when the OPS was founded. That's no money if you're from where I'm from. Funny, I just want some of your son. Dark clouds seem to follow me. Alcohol that my pops swallow follow me. No apology, I walk with a bold on my shoulder. It's a cold war. I'm a colder soldier. Hold the same fight that made Martin Luther the king. I ain't using it for the right thing. In between lean and the fiends, hustle and the schemes. I put together pieces of a dream. I still have one. I got a dream. One As you can see from that video, um, just some of the, the big events that happened during that period, such as the Rosa Parks uh, bus boycott, the um, Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech, all leading into the foundation ultimately of EOPS. And the um, biggest point of what this presentation is EOPS, just starting this semester, is now accepting AB540 students or undocumented students, ERJP. All right, so before I get into the video, um, our, our goal for the video was to uh, portray 540 students as, well, at least for this one, was to portray um, our star here, Carlos, as a hardworking individual, uh, you know, that never gives up. And um, it was really, we really tried to focus on the story of the individual 540 student instead of what the organization can offer. So maybe that uh, if an 8540 student was watching it in, uh, say, the cafeteria, they would pique interest and maybe relate to the story and take interest by themselves to go check out EPS instead of giving them a bunch of information. So without further ado. I, I started school, I was not so sure what I wanted to do. Even when I when I got out of high school, so I was not so sure. I was kind of like a bit disappointed that I didn't want to come to college. So I know after I graduated or something, I was not able to fulfill my career. But then I got in the workforce and I was making, it was like not even enough for me. I'm like, how am I gonna support a family later on? My name is Carlos Espinosa, I, I am 22, I was born in Mexico. Um, my parents, uh, they always told me that I could go to school, but I was a bit disappointed that I couldn't get a license. I, uh, it was hard to find a job, they would have to pay you under the table, or, and they were like just really not, not, not good paying jobs. I'm just gonna live life and not care about my legal status, I'm going to study, and if I can't fulfill my career right here, I'll just go back to my country. And that was my main goal at the beginning when I started. Well, now that I'm going to finish school and, you know, like some laws are changing, I received my DACA, which is uh, my deferred action, so now I have a social, I just got a like, work permit and I could get my license. So it's been a, a lot of help.
So as you can see, uh, we really try to focus on the individual story, and we have another video to show you too that we did that. Um, like I said, uh, just to really focus on, uh, hopefully they, you know, kind of match the background. Because what I found when, when we were uh, interviewing is that they had similar backgrounds. You know, a lot of them came uh, straight out of high school into the workforce. So we're thinking that maybe there's other 8540 students that have similar backgrounds, and you know, linking EOPS behind the message will kind of like, give them interest. In, so go check them out. So this fall 2013, this is the first semester, EOPS allowed 85 forces to join. This is the result of DREAM Act. And there are approximately 400 students in EOPS, and four of them are 8540. Um, with 10% of EOPS being undocumented students, as, as the, chart, the chart shows right here, there's a whole EOPS chart, but only a small fraction of 8540 students. Um, it's just uh, passed uh, December 8, 2010, and the Dream Act is uh, it's it stands for Development, Relief, and Education for Alien Minors, and this basically uh, allow uh, child children under the age of 17 who are brought in the U.S. Uh, without uh, legal papers to qualify for uh, uh, financial aid or bond waiver. And uh, the, it's, uh, if you know the BOP waiver, it's, uh, uh, it pays for your enrollment fees and a portion of your health fees. Uh, and it's uh, a lot of, and this is important to 8540 students because, uh, let me go to the next slide. Um, undocumented students have to pay uh, outside uh, tuition, which in, if, if you could see by the graph, this is a, uh, in state, out state, uh, it almost tripled the amount of money they have to be paying uh, for just attending college. So, being a, an AB 540 and now being able to qualify for financial aid or the BOP waiver is so a lot of help for 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 the AB 540 students. So it's my turn. Uh, situational issues that we found in the that we identified where that uh, there is no reputation among the AB 540 population. So how can EOPS reach out to them if they have no standing uh, reputation among them? It's like trying to reach out to something that is very far away and doesn't notice you whatsoever. So uh, one of the main problems we also saw was uh, when advertising to AB 540 students, they have no previous data on, the, on this demographic, so how can they develop a advertising plan uh, they don't have any data on it. They don't know what reaches out to them. They don't know what's very effective that gets their attention and uh, can ultimately lead to EOPS helping AB 540 students. So while the service, the purpose, and the products are still the same, the demographic is completely different, and that makes the biggest difference when you're trying to reach out to someone. So some of the strengths of EOPS is that it's been around for over 40 years. And that's a big deal because that means they know who they're trying to market to. They know the students and they know exactly what they need. Another thing is priority registration upon joining, which is huge. If you guys have ever tried to get a class, like last minute, it's no good. Um, another one is purchasing textbooks and they help students pay for transportation. That's a really big strength just because if you guys don't have a way to get to school, they, all the other stuff doesn't matter, so that's really important. And then it's a counseling program, so they're not just going to send you out there, they're going to actually help you guys get through it. Go over some of uh, EOPS's weaknesses. Uh, EOPS is a brand new service that's uh, new to the AB 540 students. This is actually the first semester that um, these services are available to them. And, um, you know, prior to this, they really had no reason to go to the EOPS office to go through the program. Um, so an issue that we face is probably gaining the interest of the AB 540 students to come into the program and start using the services that are available. Uh, another would be that there are, um, like that was reiterated earlier, there's no prior background to advertising to the AB 540 students um, because the service is so brand new. And um, even with that, now that they are available, 
EOPS also has a limited number of spots um, for students who are interested to come to the program. Some of the um, opportunities, EOPS offers a variety of opportunities, but um, together as a group, we found that the greatest opportunity for this particular demographic is helping a generally less fortunate population in the AB 540 students. Um, upon interviewing a student, we found that it's often hard, um, they find it often hard to talk to people because they don't know who they can really trust. In fact, we went to a, a club meeting with AB 540 students, and I can, on quote, I said, is it hard for you to talk to people? She said, yes, it is. I said, why is it so hard for you to tell your story? And she literally told me, I can't, I don't, we don't know who to trust because we don't know if they'll turn us into immigration services. Mm -hmm. And just, just thinking about that, you don't know if you can talk to someone because you might get turned into immigration services. That is just, it's, it's disheartening. And to find that that's how they feel when it's just talking about anything, academic problems, personal problems, and they don't know who they can trust with that. And with EOPS, however, they, they can provide that safe haven. They can become a go-to for these students because I, we, we felt that if they know they're accepted in EOPS, then they know they can trust them. With now that they are AB 540, we welcome you. We don't just want you, but we welcome you into the program because if some, everyone wants to be wanted, and if you show that you want the, if someone wants you, you automatically kind of build that trust with them. You, you, can, you can use them as a confidant. So EOPS threats. Um, so one of the major, uh, no, there's really no real threats. All threats that, we, that EOPS faces are theoretical. So government funded programs, uh, if they cut budgets of you know, spending of EOPS, this could limit the number of students that EOPS can accept. And being that AB 540 is already 10%, a very small percentage of the total populace of EOPS, uh, this could further you know, limit the spots that uh, number of uh, 8540 students can be accepted. So, so uh, this, th although you know this is very theoretical, it can be a major factor and it could be very real. The leverage constraint, um, what the most, the most part leverage points is for our registration. Because I was, I was on two days ago trying to get a class, it's hard. And with 8540 students, it might be harder. They set up paying out of tuition, higher fees. And some of the classes are impacted, like nursing, mechanical engineering, math science, some of the most basic ones. And um, no sense, you know, become more packed, because community college for education, they still get the same amount, same education for it. And if the funding was cut, that will limit the, that will put a cap on number of members who could join EOPS. I'm going to talk about how our EOPS might be portable and some of the problems. Um, one of the biggest threats, like I said, is government funding, uh, the cuts. Uh, now this could uh, take away some of, uh, of, could target some of the EOPS trend, with it, which is uh, book buying assistance and transportation. Uh, if the, the states uh, uh, cuts funding, they might not be able to give those anymore. Um, and also, a problem is created now because um, one of the weaknesses is the limited amount of, of people that EOPS could take. Uh, cutting cutting uh, fundings might even limit them, them from taking even more people, so they might have to um, close the gap on how many people they might have to take. And this could get some affect some of the AB540 students who really need help to get in the OPS. So uh, the main objective uh, as consultants of the OPS was what's the best way to reach AB540 students? And uh, we came up with a few things, but let's face it, they weren't that great. Uh, but uh, Professor Purcell gave us the opportunity to talk with Professor Sheehan, a former uh, CEO of uh, advertising giant Such and Such uh, Australia and Such and Such Japan. And he gave us three main points to focus on. And those were that the product exists. So we had to show AB540 students that they are now accepted into EOPS. Uh, we had to uh, make it known so they can reach out. But not only that, we also have to gain their trust. So it's a, it's a little bit complicated. The second uh, point that he, get, uh, he told us was what it actually does. 
So obviously we all know what EOPS does. It, they give you uh, assistance emotionally and uh, financially. But not only that, they also give you that extra push that you need. That push to reach out for something better because you know you deserve that. They give you that push for that hope that you can, you thought it wasn't, you couldn't grasp it, but now you, you, you believe you can and you know you have a chance to get something better than what you have right now. And uh, the third point is how it is beneficial. And really, how is it not beneficial? I mean, all they do is help you, so there's really no, like, drawback. There's no, oh, I don't want to go to UPS because blah, blah, blah. It's only beneficial. So uh, we plan on uh, not creating a logical, not only a logical connection with our target audience, but also an emotional one. So uh, we want to create something intimate that they will miss. We want to create that love mark that will stay on them and stay on them forever and be like, yeah, I want to be part of EOPS because they can't help me and they can't make a difference. Um, we want to show, we think it's important to show EOPS students that um, EOPS is a rich in history program. It's been around for more than 40 years and like I said, they know who their students are and they know exactly how to help them. So if you qualify, they want to do everything possible to make sure that you're successful and their experience can really help with that. Um, um, for the love mark, we wanted to show, we wanted to create a love mark by showing that AB540 students are just like every other student. They obviously have a lot more trials than we have to overcome, but they're just like students. Like Carlos is in our class, nobody knew. Everybody, they walk around every day and we don't even recognize them because they're scared to tell everybody, but we wanted to show them that they're just like everybody else so that people can connect to them better. Now we're going to go over our advertising mix. Um, we have two groups. One group is uh, doesn't know anything about EOPS or hasn't heard of it, and the other group is uh, they either know of it or they're even in the program and using the services that they provide. Um, now we want to use flyers and commercials with information about EOPS for both groups, but with the first group we want to just familiarize them with the, the programs that, that they offer just as a whole. And then uh, with the second, we want to give them more specific details and um, even more specifically for the AB540 student that now they're welcome to join EOPS. And uh, we have another video that's going to come up that we'll show you um, this time with uh, two AB540 students uh, from the SAFE Club. I tried applying to community college before, but I had to pay out-of-state out tuition, so I took two years off. When I first had the idea to come to college, I thought it would be impossible because a lot of people told me that I couldn't go to college because I was undocumented. For a whole year after I graduated from high school, I didn't go to college. I just worked because everybody kept on telling me, like, you can, you can do it. I even had a person tell me that I should go back to Mexico because I did not, this was not my country and I should not even be here. My name is Sonia Mora and I was born in Guadalajara, Jalisco and I came here when I was 11 years old. My name is Cynthia Rodriguez. Can you pause? Can you pause? Yeah. Are you running it from the flash drive? No. I put okay. it this time. Okay. He's going to be big file. And I came here when I was 11 years old. My name is Cynthia Rodriguez. I was born in uh, Mazatlán, Sinaloa. My parents brought me here when I was two years old. Honestly, like during that year that I was in school, I was really trapped. Sorry about that. Server's crowded because it's shame. It's probably right. I think you're right. The year that I was in school, I was really trapped. Let's do this. Why don't you uh, finish, and then after your presentation, let me try to see if we can uh, run it a different way. We got about halfway through. Okay. Okay. We'd like to see the end. Yeah. yeah. I know, right? We're teasing you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's what yeah. you're doing. That's all part of the plan. All part of the plan. Um, so that's a video interview and also a possible uh, commercial that can be made for, um, for EOPS. Um, we're going back to our advertising strategy, um, portraying these AB540 students as normal students, simply because that they are normal students. Um, just the only difference is that they have different struggles and hardships, and that's what we touch on there. 
um, different from Carlos. Um, they, they, they are similar grouping, but still different. You know, telling, she had her parents tell her that, you know, you can't get an education, or you can't do this, um, you can't go to school because you're undocumented. Different, different trials that they've had to overcome, even if it's mental. Um, we also show that they have the same goals and hopes as any other student here. They're, they're trying to further their education, they're trying to move on just like anyone else just with that different background. And by, um, we, we also use the positioning of where we film these interviews in front of EOPS, and as you saw in the Carlos video, um, where it's located, because we know location has been also uh, talked about as kind of an issue. With this video, you're actually being taken almost as like a map to a EOPS. They walk up the stairs and show you where it's at. Um, as far as our advertising mix goes, um, this cements the fact that 8540 students are um, welcome into EOPS. They're, they're, right, they're saying that they are AB 540, that they were born in Mexico, but they are also shown going into EOPS. Um, just saying, so, so they show that they are um, accepted. And then finally, I want to touch on, if you saw on the end of the first one, um, we have a, a slogan, what's your story? And just, it's kind of an open-ended question, but we know that it can target anyone. Every individual has a story, whether it's AB 540, whether you're documented, no matter what. So, what's your story? It doesn't just it doesn't just target separate people. It doesn't say, oh well, just because you have to have this kind of background to join. Everyone has a different story, but EOPS can help you write the story. EOPS can help you further that story, and um, that's just what we want to show. In that video. And which comes to our flyer. So the uh, the purpose of our flyer was really to something make something that grabbed your attention. As you can see quickly from the top, uh, we chose orange as one of the colors just because it's probably the most pop color that you know, really pops out at you with the two white uh, blocks of, above and below it. And uh, the orange on the side again leads you down to the bottom of the page. So it really, it really just kind of takes your eyes from the top of the page to the bottom of the page, giving you the most, uh, probably the fastest information, the, the most quick like just details of how to join AB, uh, AB540 and EOPS. With advertising tactics, we plan to advertise through TV, social media, and so on and so forth. And you know, if there's studies that says 40% of people still get their information from TV, the news. And there's TVs in the Sun Store, cafeteria. And the people, people pick up on TV, they see them, they see something moving, and they pay attention to it. Those plan to reach your target audience through the flyer, and also Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I have plans to, plans to um, create a short video and compile the, the 8540 students of the interviews. Okay. So, um, one of uh, another idea we had is because uh, flyers and videos can only go so long, I don't know how many times I've passed the flyers telling information about. Uh, we uh, had an idea of uh, Having EOPS and the Safe Club, which is, stands for Students Alliance for Education, which uh, to have like kind of uh, an alliance or kind of like a strategic a strategic alliance. Uh, and this Safe Club is actually organized by AB540 students. It's just they just passed this semester, and uh, it's it's a club where they want to make uh, AB540 feel secure. Um, they also want to inform them uh, of the opportunities that they are. They're trying. They're not only trying to inform just AB540 students, just uh, staff and members, uh, uh, kind of bring awareness of what AB540s are and who they are. Um, so, uh, so the me now me being a member of this safe club. And I remember uh, we're trying to gather awareness, and we want to partner up with UPS to 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 kind of bring the club inside and kind of educate ourselves. Because I was surprised that so many people that we interviewed them, they knew about UPS, but they they remember that like a few semesters back when they were they've been told no that you can't join. So they were still thinking that they can't join. So they were really surprised. They knew about UPS, but they were really surprised that now they're able to join and be in UPS. 
So kind of like educate uh, people in the club to know what the how things are working now, and because they they have the they have uh, the job to or our goal is to educate other people about about um, opportunities for 8540 students. Uh, it would be a really good idea to 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 work together. Gotta finish strong, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, bring it on. <laughs> so once examined more closely, uh, we found that there were going to be two subgroup subgroup uh, groupings in, uh, in our target audience. That being 8540 students that don't know really anything about the OPS and uh, 8540 students that know about the OPS but didn't know that they could be accepted now. They didn't know that uh, they can get more help now from uh, the OPS. So uh, our strategy did not only focus on just the problems that are now and how to fix them, but also on the future and how to uh, how to bring in more AB540 students each semester, how to increase that population. And uh, like Carla said, the alliance with the SAFE group, we thought it was a great idea because, I mean, that's that's a club that is AB540 oriented, and if there were to be an alliance, it's, it's a source of AB540 students that EOPS can help. Uh, it's, it's like a golden opportunity, let's say. And uh, extended opportunities, programs, and services used to be confined to accepting only a certain type of student. And uh, now that they accept AB540 students, it's like they broaden their, their range. There's so many more opportunities of helping students that think they cannot go in anymore longer anymore. But now EOPS is there to help them, bring them back up, and continue strong. And uh, this was our presentation. Thank you. the research that you guys did on behalf of our staff that's here, uh, the research that you did in connecting with you know, Carlos with the club. Um, I know that this was, it was not an easy process to put all of this information together. I really think it was very creative how you, in the video, made it like a map, you know, like you mentioned, where you're talking to the student, but you're also directing them to where the office is physically located. I mean, that just showed, um, you know, the effort that each of you put into this. And I hope on a personal level that you were able to take away something from this that you can now continue to be AB540 EOPS ambassadors wherever you go. You know, um, you, you will have that opportunity to continue to get that message out beyond this classroom and that, um, you know, I have a lot of confidence in you to be able to do that. So thank you. Good job.